Okay. Uh, how about we we'll call our meeting to order? Uh, the first part of business is the approval, additions or corrections to the minutes of the regular commission meeting held on January 12th. I move for approval. John Bergen moves I'll second to approve. That. Rick second. All in agreement, please say aye. Aye. Um, action items, well to cleaning and redevelopment. We've been having issues with well two in its capacity. It's dropped off substantially. We can't even use a large pump in it. Uh, the small pump gets down to a pretty close range where it's going to start sucking air. So we've got to have a rehab. I went out to four different companies. Uh, Reynolds Construction, they're out of Indiana. Lane Rainey, who has done our wells in the past. Um, they're in Ohio. And then Municipal Wells in Wisconsin. And so is Water Well Solutions. Um, as you can see, there's quite a price difference between one to the other. Um, we've used Water Well Solutions in the past for cleaning well five. That's our vertical well. And then we also used Municipal Well at one time in that well also. But long story short, I guess I kind of recommend using the water well solutions for cleaning this one. Um, we'll see how they do. Um, they haven't done a lot of them. Neither have this below, but we can give them a try. It's a lot cheaper than what it is going for the other companies. And they did really good on well five, so I think we'll be all right with this one as well. Dale, is this uh, a collector well? Or is this a. <laughs> or yeah. is that Tom? Yeah, it's the collector well, yeah. yeah. And where is well number two? Um, just off the of airport. Okay. Airport. Let's go back or something. Do you know why there's such a big price difference? Um, a lot of it is the first two are actually do construction of the wells, and a lot of it is transportation, getting them here, mobilizing them. Uh, that's a, a big share of it. And I guess they got kind of the corner on the market nationwide or. Worldwide, but uh, yeah. See. Just to add to that story a little bit, the last time we did one of these, the story was Lane Rainey had purchased all the competition, and we ended up paying the high price. So I say compliments to to Dale here. Otherwise, we'd be paying this three hundred and sixty or three hundred eighty thousand. So we have this budget as an ORM expense this year, right? Yeah. yeah. We do. We did budget 150000 so we're within budget on this one. So. <clears throat> yeah, so this is held and proven. I hope that they have all the right tools for the laterals. You know, it's a little different than working with a straw. Yeah. I met with them, and we talked about it, and... They've actually done a couple of them already, so it's not all brand new to them, but in talking with them, I feel confident in what they can do. So, How many laterals do you have in this well? Uh, this well has four active laterals. So, so you got one blinded off or whatever? Um, they're all open right now. What we do is we go down and shut them all off, and then they'll do one at a time and go that way. And when you get all done, they'll turn them on. And so but you don't have any that are permanently. But they're all permanent. This we have some that are blank and removed. You know. None of them have been abandoned. No. Not this well. Not. We had some. That, there's four other laterals that are abandoned. They're yeah. permanently closed off. And these are four that were put in. All back in the '60s, I think, or the '70s. Okay. So you do have some that are abandoned. Yes. <coughs> are they close to the ones you're using, or? Well, you got your well is about 18 feet across, so they go out and these are placed in between the other ones. There's actually room for more if you want to go later on. If these get bad, you could block these off and put in different laterals. So that's kind of the nice part about a collector well is you can put new laterals in if need be until you use up all your spaces around the circle. Okay. And they've got to pass the pump test before they after the cleaning, correct? Right. So we should know so where we're at. Okay. Good. 
And what is the capacity at now? You said it's severely reduced, but <laughs> percentage-wise. Right. Let's see, we're down to about 400 gallons a minute. Based on what's 100 capacity? 000. What's that? Our big pump put out 1,300 gallons a minute, okay. so okay. we turn a large pump on, it'll suck it down within 10 minutes. So. Thank you. So I would move that we approve the amending number two cleaning by Waterwell Solutions for $135,000. Second. Okay, uh, John Bergen made a motion to approve the uh, water well solutions quote for 135000 and uh, Jay second. Is there any other discussion, comments? Not all in agreement, please say aye. Aye. Are there any nays? Thank you. Thanks, Dale. Okay, uh, safety committee meeting minutes. Emergency action plan. When was the last time you changed it? There hasn't been any changes with that plan. Um, we review, we're required to review all of our safety programs annually. That is a regulatory requirement. Okay. Um, nothing has changed. All of our locations are still the same, evacuations are still the same. So it's just a normal review. Okay. All right, how about we go to the line superintendent's report? So you highlighted that there was a fire. Was this something significant or? No, just a structure fire. I just tried to call out what the off category ones are, I guess. So nothing serious. And how difficult is it to replace the holes in the winter? It's not great. Yeah. Uh, with the vacuum excavator, it, it's manageable. I mean, we, we try not to do any more than we have to in the winter. It's just not cost effective. But there was a couple got hit last week again, so. Okay. Any other questions? How uh, about the water department report? I assume when you're in somebody's crawl space that we are bringing in a private plumber to do that, that we're not taking care of the frozen pipes? No, all, all we take care of is the meter itself if that's frozen or broken. Um, we'll shut the water off with the valve either in the house if it's after that point or if we have to shut it off before that will shut off the curb box. Yeah, private plumbers take care of the rest or whatever. We don't deal with that at all. Do you deal with the, if the uh, lateral is frozen from the house to the street? Do you unthaw that? Yes, we do. In the, in the yard. Yep. Okay. And what do you do that with like a <laughs> generator? A welding unit, well, probably, right? right? Yeah, we actually have, we also have the alternative, which is, is to use the uh, water probe or the hose. Um, we got that for people who have poly or plastic tubing going into the house. You can't use a welder on that, obviously. So we have that other option. Depending on how many beds are in, the tubing coming in, it works good until it hits the curb valve. But we haven't had to use it a lot, but we did use it one time this year already. So, Are there some people in the city that are still uh, authorized to run water? We do have some that are running water, yes. We sent out those notices, I think it was the end of, middle of this January, we sent out the 11th or 12th. What part of the city would that be? 
It varies. It depends on when we have shuttle services in the city. Okay. Because they're 36 on every cent dollar. So do you have something besides metal between the curb box and the house? Or is this poly that you said, is that all inside the house? Um, typically we run copper all the way, we like to see copper all the way into the house. But in recent years people have been putting poly in from the curb box into the house and run it throughout the house. Don't you have some sort of code that says? It would have to be a city ordinance. I, mean, I don't know, we don't. Uh, we do to the curb stop. I don't know the city may have an ordinance. We should probably check it, but I don't think they would, plumbers would put it in if they. Yeah, I think there's nothing there at this point. Maybe something to look at. It might be. Any other questions with Dale? Uh, if not, the. Uh, Customer support supervisor report. This five hundred forty-five thousand electric benefits is all of the difference between the one hundred thirty-nine and the five forty-five due to this COVID funding. Um, there was additional funding this year, but most, I mean, most of the funding that we receive is a general um, benefit that a lot of people receive. It doesn't necessarily mean that um, you are behind on your bill or you've gotten any crisis funding. That's part of this, but that isn't all of it. A lot of this is just regular benefits that people receive every year. Historically, the utility receives more in energy efficiency benefits than we put in, just based on our population. I but thought about that actually, and I thought I should have probably done a comparison of previous years. That would have helped. I can do that next month. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? If not, the uh, Director of Finance report. Boy, that was a, a bit of a shock on the uh, cybersecurity insurance, huh? Yeah, that was a surprising email when we opened that one up, so. Are we confident this Wisconsin Mutual has got the horsepower to support a problem if there is one? Um, I believe they would. I mean, they've been doing our, um, uh, you know, liability insurance for our buildings and everything um, for a number of years. So they're pretty well um, financed. It's through the league municipalities as well. So I don't think we'd choose them if they didn't have the building at all. Okay. Our agent was pretty comfortable in that one and actually recommended. Do they offer a uh, advisory service service as well on what to do for cybersecurity? I can check into that. I know you know when we got through it, there was multiple um, quotes we looked at. Um, I'm not sure if they had that advisor. I would assume they do because I mean, when other insurances we've worked with give us that service. Right. Um, and I would assume they still do the leak, but I will. Uh, I'll check that out too and verify. Yeah, because it would be good to take advantage of that just to double check our, our efforts. Is there any indication um, with that response from travelers um, whether that was due to you know travelers' experience or anything within the utility that they saw? You know what I mean? Um, I heard. Uh, Neighbor utilities had the similar increases okay. from travelers. Um, I think the the assumption from our insurance agent was they're just trying to get out of municipal business. Oh, okay. Just trying to price themselves to okay. get out that way without um, getting rid of policies themselves. It worked. It did. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say it's pretty effective. Five hundred percent. Interesting to see how many of them, how many customers actually still went. 
with it, right? Yes. Are there any other questions of Jim? Elite of Wisconsin Mutual Insurer Insurers uh, is that part of the uh, municipal League of Municipalities? Are they are they just somebody that insures or they're recommended? They work closely with the league. Okay, they're not really part of it, though. I don't think they're technically a part of it, but they're, I mean, they, they do uh, insure most of the municipalities in the state. Must have been some reason why we were with travelers to begin with. I don't know if the league at the time was doing policies five, six years ago when we first um, got a cybersecurity policy. Um, I think they were pretty new just into the insuring the buildings and whatnot. Um, so I think we just want travelers and I think the insurance wasn't as expensive as it is becoming now. So just kind of stuck with them because it was, it was cost effective. Well, sometimes you just have to shop insurance like for sure at least four years. Because right. they just love to sneak it up on you. I mean, this is not a sneak up job. <laughs> yeah, this is a <laughs> sneak up job. It's more like a full blown <laughs> Yeah. Frontal assault. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, information systems administrator report. So you're pretty close to done with your multi-factor, huh? Yes. I was hoping to finish up this week. Uh, I'm not sure if the vendor's going to be available to finish this week. He said he's definitely available next week, though. No staff wounds so far? Nope, nothing big so far. You know, in regards to the insurance of the multi-factor authentication, I would imagine there's minimum standards with the insurance company that you have to have certain things in place to get this insurance. And that's where this multi-factor authentication, yeah. it's yeah. been on Matt's radar to do, but then with this renewal period, everybody yeah. was requiring it, so. Yeah. Uh, no other questions on that. Um, how about the conservation manager report? Do you know if RCH found out what was causing that spike? They have not gotten back to me. Uh, okay. I'll be following up with them probably in the next couple of weeks, give them a little time. I don't know whether it makes sense or not, but a question I had, you know, we have this huge number of folks that have electric bills that they're having trouble paying. Um, is there a reason for that, that some of your work would benefit those individuals? You know, I see we're, we're focused on commercial and that's great and you do an excellent job. It's not a critique of that, but are there homeowners that... He gets those yeah. calls too. And <laughs> and I would never think, you know, to answer that, the office, you know, probably in the last year, even going back a little further, but I see it more frequent now, the office sends those customers that they think they can help residential-wise to me, um, and, and, and I discuss it with them on the phone. I do a load analysis to see if they would benefit from time of day. Um, last week I had two, for example, that I, I got that phone call sent up to me so you don't see that typically in my reports because it's I guess the small scale side of things and so I'm pretty much focusing on the commercial and industrial customers but yes the office does a good job of that we do even discuss 
LED lighting. That's a topic that I discuss with them. Um, you know, I have a picture of maybe folks using a, like an electric space, space heater. heater or that type of thing that sucks up a whole lot more energy than its value. Yeah, all those questions get asked. And the office staff is, is, is also so experienced to ask those questions as well. But when it comes to, okay, how can we help them save time of day, that's poured into me. Okay, well, good. Anything else? Sean? Okay, I believe the uh, electrical engineer's report. Tyler, I don't know if you noticed, we got a bunch of uh, acronyms here. I do have two questions on your report. All right. I, Jim answered one, the, uh, uh, the V is a, a VFD variable frequency drive, yep. I believe. What is a MCC? So the MCC is the motor control center. Motor control center. That's where all the drives are lined up next to each other in the filter plant. Is, is that where we're putting the, in the same area that the caustic is used for the? No. That's a whole different place. It's in it's in the room with the uh, cell doors, the clarifiers. Okay. And it's kind of odd, you can see a patina in your photo. Yeah. So the top two and the top three don't have it. Our bottom three don't have it. Yeah. So I cleaned those bottom three and then I took a picture to show the comparison. Yeah, oh, so, so all five had it. All five had it. Yeah, I get it. Um, a lot of the copper on the, on the motherboards looked like that. So I'm trying to figure out a way to get rid of that. Is it, do you have excess chlorine in that room? That's what I imagine. It's chlorine in the air from humidity because there's standing water in that room. So I'm guessing. That's what it's from. But if you put grease on it, then the moisture won't collect on the electrical components. Okay. So that's our main, our main uh, solution. You know, instead of plant and water pumps, we had a, it was a investment cast, you know, loss of wax process. And they tried a new uh, system out of these use a slurry, you know, you take the wax cast and you keep dipping it and then you burn the wax off. But they had one, it used some kind of a caustic reaction in a plastic shell. Well, they had aluminum bus on the top and all of a sudden some of the connections, I think there were duplicate materials attaching to the aluminum. I think they were giving some galvanic reaction. And so they had scrapped that whole system or replaced the whole electrical system. And this still, this room still had a lot of water, but it didn't have the chemicals, caustic chemicals that went high and hitting the bus. Yeah. And, uh, and that's just the first thought I had: is there's some high chlorine or something in the air that you might have to segregate off the, yeah, the panel. Likely something in the moisture. that's causing it, like yeah. a chemical. Yeah, right. And what would a, if you had to have a variable frequency drive spare, it's kind of expensive, isn't it? $10,000 or so? We have a buy-in one, right, Tyler? Yeah, we got one. We have a backup now. Oh, you do? Yep. Okay. Yeah, we went into panic mode there for a little bit, and uh, not only because of the drive failing, but with all the limited quantities because of COVID, yeah. um, they had one um, in stock and they said, if we don't grab it, you're not going to see another one for three, four months. So we acted fast. Oh, good. Any other questions of Tyler? If not, Director of Engineering and Electric Operations Report. Just on that 
filter plant corrosion. You know, if you move a lot more air with chlorine, in it, it won't necessarily solve the problem. Yeah, I guess we're hoping with an air exchanger we could change out the air more. And if we were to suck it from either the top of the roof or, or in the middle of the building and the MCCs are on the outer walls, maybe your chlorine won't get to the outer walls as much. So I guess that's what our thoughts are. So Dale's just looking at the pricing at this point. But I think one of the big problems we were seeing up there is we didn't have the heating working correctly, but now we do, so that's helped a lot. So we had, you know, standing water on the floor and condensation on the walls. And I think it's pretty much gone now that the heaters are working right. So yeah, we got the we had a furnace downstairs. Spring leak. We need to shut that off. It, we didn't see or notice that there was a bypass that actually stopped the water flow for the heating system. So the old part of the building, and we finally were able to track down a, a valve that was covered by insulation and turn that on. Now we got water back up there. And the condensation's all. It's gone back to normal again, so we're hoping that will help out as well. Hopefully that'll take care of it. You don't have to pour anything else into it. Yeah, I don't like in the mills. We always had separate rooms for the equipment. And hopefully we don't have to get to that point because the building wasn't designed with an extra room somewhere to put it. But so we're trying to, you know, take off the low hanging fruit first and if it doesn't work, we'll have to do something more major. Right. Yeah. But I've been through that in the mill where we circulate more air, but yeah, it doesn't if it's help. the same stuff. <laughs> it's, it ain't going to help, yeah. In yeah. fact, I think we actually experienced the opposite. <laughs> oh, good. Where it, yeah. Well, and that's where um, Tyler and the, our two electricians reduced the fans on these drives because they were running all the time, even when the drive wasn't running as part of the cooling package. And, and it was sucking air from the bottom, blowing it out the top. We reversed the direction, and now the fans also only run when the drive runs, so that we can try to limit how much air it's getting brought into those cabinets. Yeah. So, yeah. Any other questions? Uh, I was director of engineering and while we did that, we have general manager report. Do you say anything more about the development? No. I, okay. Not because I can't say because I don't know any okay. better. We haven't, heard, we haven't heard since the meeting either. So. Okay. And uh, you're sure that this won't affect uh, water quality? Not if they follow a city ordinance, it'll all be city water and sewer, so we shouldn't have any issues. And the, the way they'll handle the runoff and so on will be managed so it won't end up in our wells? Yeah, I mean, that's up to the city engineering department. I can't imagine that wouldn't be curving gutter with storm sewer and everything that we do well. Is this north of where this is well? usual, I would think. I can't Three imagine any exceptions. Is this, so is this it is currently well. land that's in the city? Yeah. Yeah. There's another one. Yeah. I don't know. I, yeah. what, what you see here is about as I was is aware it, of this. Is it land that's in the city, John? Uh, it is not. It's Grand Rapids, so it will have to be annexed. It's got to be annexed, too. Yeah. yeah, so, you know, Grand Rapids got some pretty loosey-goosey uh, rules as far as storm sewer and all of that. Well, it won't go if it's not a rapids project. Yeah. We won't sell the land. Yeah. So. <laughs> uh, yeah, we, I mean, we've got to be really careful. And the storm water runoff is a big deal, as I see it. <clears throat> so that area is kind of there's quite a few settling ponds in that area. 16th for the, some of the, the Rosewood subdivision I know have a big one, and then a little bit north, the city has a settling pond also. <coughs> so I imagine they probably have to put something for a new development also. Right. 
it's okay if it's lined and wiped and handled and all that good stuff. <clears throat> hey, Jim, I'm not going to hold you responsible, but uh, the 2018 strategic plan that MEUW uh, had, there's in stone place. Have, has anything been changed or done to that plan? No, I, the meeting uh, at the board meeting, they were trying to get volunteers to sit on the committee to revise it. So no, it hasn't been changed. That's what they're going to try to do this year. But after they had two or three stop and goes at the executive director position, this Tim Heinrich that had it, Scott now is doing, doing a good job. Good. Uh, if that's all for Jim, I'll put review the accounts payable. this once before. The AFLAC insurance. That is 100% paid for by employees. That's just uh, it's a pre-tax deductions. Yeah, we just cut that check to AFLAC that monthly. Okay. In page four of five, um, Elster Solutions LLC AMI gatekeepers, 29,000 What is that for? Right. The uh, gatekeepers are, are our meter collectors that are out in the system. We have 18 of them, and that was the last group that we needed to replace. You know, that was the last group of eight that we needed to replace. Okay. So that's actually eight. Gate, they call them gatekeepers. We call them meter collectors. Okay. Thank you. They pick up all the signals from the meters and send them to the office. See, there was an ATC capital call. Yeah. When was the last one? They would have one once a month. They didn't do any in 2021. Okay. Um, because of the settlement they had primarily with uh, um, up by uh, um, the, Mich between the Michigan. The Upper and Lower Michigan. Michigan. Um, yeah, they had that uh, settlement up there, so they didn't do any capital calls in 2021, but they're starting back up, obviously, in 2022. So. Okay. So also, please, Jeff, that you missed this note, um, that you're changing this expense reporting. Could you say that again, John? Well, it's in his notes on the cash flow statement. Oh. Are you good with that? Yes. Okay, good. Just want to make sure. Just cleans it up a little bit. And right. What is the change of third column? So two things, yeah, that we're adding the, the prior year to date and then any NSF fees will be netted in the utility revenues, knowing that we either collected them that month or we'll be collecting them the following month. There's okay. very few NSFs that we don't collect from our customers. So it's just to kind of clean that up a little bit and net them out of the utility receipts that way. Otherwise it was being reported as an expense. For the directional boring, is that on more recent projects and the building is just coming in or yeah, they come I mean, in winter time, but they left in December. Yeah. They finished up in December. Right. So there was just a few miscellaneous invoices that okay. showed up. I didn't know if there was a current project going on. No, we've been seeing that a lot lately, even on the electrical contractors that I use for the substation. We you know, we received an invoice in January from work done in early October. I just ain't sure why they are so late on getting them to us, but noticed that lately, you know, that they're later. <coughs> well, you 
you just wait another 90 days then to pay them, right? Yep. <laughs> Any other questions? Would somebody like a motion to uh, close the meeting? Motion to adjourn. Second. Everybody did that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I think Jay made the motion. John second. Aye. 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 Aye.